lengthy, unprepared presentations. Aren't you annoyed by those? Hi, my name is Pascal Corbet. I'm a communications consultant specializing in the area of agriculture and rural development. I want to talk to you today about one thing that's really annoying me for a long, long time. That's the fact that you go as a communications person, but also as a visitor into an event or nowadays an online event quite often. And you find that your presenters have spent every minute of their time on looking at their PowerPoint presentation. They sent you the last version like two hours before the event because they've changed the comma there and a, and a notion there, which is all fine. But when it comes to the actual presentation, they have not actually practiced their presentation. What I mean is they come to the event, they start talking, and they do a number of things that wouldn't happen if they had thought about how they actually come across. Now, first of all, the most obvious point is they get too long. They have a 10 minute slot and they have maybe been told that 10 slides would definitely be enough. Now, they have 25. Two and a half minutes per slide is not a big thing. But now you can make the calculation, you're never going to make it or they're never going to make it in 10 minutes. What is the consequence of all this? Well, there's the moderator that's annoying, annoying them. Then there is other people in the audience who start tweeting apparently, but maybe they're just sending messages to their friends and they're only listening with one ear. The next speaker is going to get annoyed because he's going to get constantly told that he needs to cut his, short, uh, his time short because the other guy was actually overexpanding. Events cost a whole lot of money. And there are a lot of people traveling to the event, not just the presenter. Even if you're online, there is a lot of time spent actually in the up running to the event. But... That last bit, the presentation, is not checked up. The people that organize the event are not going to the person and saying, can we make a little, can we, um, can we make sure that the presentation is right on time? That it's, no, well, you just believe what they say because there's a certain relationship to the people that is, I don't know where it comes from. It's maybe because people are all from a scientific background. They have their degrees. So they leave the content to the expert, which is fine. Obviously, you're not, you're not messing with the actual content of the presentation, but you are the organizer of the event. So what's the solution? Now, well, one thing to actually think about it is that you ask the presenter to take the time, have a deadline for the actual content of the presentation, and then ask their colleagues, maybe some interns, but also maybe their boss to have a little session for 10 minutes, because actually that's what you're looking for, 10 minutes plus 10, min 10 minutes debriefing, and talk about uh, and, and, and have, have your presentation and have a little debriefing. And then maybe a second time if you don't like it. That's, that's one solution. The, the other way, if you, if you think you can't really bother your colleagues, then well, there's this thing that everybody has nowadays, the cell phone. They all have cameras. You can stick them in between two. If you don't have a tripod for it, you can stick them in between two books and put it up because it's not about how the, the, how the actual uh, picture comes out. But you sit it up there and you talk to them. You look into it. You talk to the people in the camera. That way you can make sure that you have a certain um, life feeling to your whole interaction that you talk in the way that you would talk during the event. Because usually you need to talk a little bit slower during an event than what you would do when you just sort of go through it in your mind or you just read it off the paper. Then you go much quicker because you have it all in your mind. If you're in the live event, you look at them and people start shifting. You need to make some adjustments if too many people are wandering off something with, with something here and there. So you need to make sure that that doesn't happen. So then you can take the footage in your own private time, obviously, and look at it. Well, there's one thing about it. It's obviously quite a humbling experience. And I think that's part of the reason why some people don't want to go through this. Because it's quite a strange feeling 
uh, with me, we my, myself as well, you, you look at the stuff and then you feel, ooh, okay. But on the other hand, you see that you actually, actually have quite a way to go with the whole thing. The, what else is there to stay? So you can definitely make sure that's the easy part that you, that, that you adjust your timing, okay? If the whole thing takes 25 minutes, you have 10, you know you need to cut also on your content, not just the way you present, also on your content. You need to go over this. Another thing that you can see is obviously that you need to keep this eye contact. Now I'm talking to the camera, but the same is true to people. You cannot just go off and lose the eye contact because the second you're not looking at people in the audience, the, you, you have the point where they easily look at their cell phone, check their emails or whatever else is seemingly more important. You, so you can look around and talk to people. You can see how people react to things, what they understood, what they, where you kind of losing them. So if you keep that contact, it's important. So once you look at your own presentation behind you, that's that second where these people are going on to their cell phone. Or if you start reading something off that's on the screen that they can actually, or they, they have read it before themselves already, now you're reading this. So they, you, you're confusing people with actually repeating this. So you will intuitively feel that you need to rephrase that while you talk to people, in this case, into the camera or to your colleagues. Now, and one more thing that might happen, which is maybe also important, which goes a little bit beyond that, is you will feel from the whole presentation that you need to have some sort of beginning and end and why you should actually start talking with the why and not about the background and the definitions. No matter how important it is for you to be scientific, you should always start with the why of the subject, not the what, when, where, the definition, the how. Start with the why. Why is it important to have your input here? That's something that this guy, Jeremy Donovan, has actually uh, put into a nice little book booklet and the, the strongest point he makes that he talks about, which I recommend to look at, is speak about the why first and then go into details. I recommend this highly. Well, that should do it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'm going to continue preparing some more inputs like this. Thank you very much.